Hey, welcome back. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman. Game 16 in our new series, AlphaGo versus the World. Uh, Michael, we're, we're in this uh, new phase here. Uh, what can you tell us about the player before we get into the game? Uh, today's player is Len Shaw. Um, he's a seven Don at the time. He was uh, shortly after this, he was promoted to nine Don. One mm -hmm. of the most prominent players in China. Like uh, he's the first player to hold all three of the major titles in China. So that's the um, the Kinsheng, I think it's called. Um, that's the like the Kisei in Japan, and Mingyang is the Meijin in Japan, and Tingyang is what we call Tengen in Japan. They have similar names. Um, obviously, I'm not so good at pronouncing them in Chinese. But yeah, so he, he was one of the first, he was the first player to get three at the same time. Wow. And so one of the top Chinese players. And I think I started to pay a lot of attention to him, um, starting with this series, actually, because um, he played some very interesting games against AlphaGo. And these are some of the games where AlphaGo is going to start breaking the rules. Oh, excellent. Breaking the rules. All right, let's take a look. Well, not so much in this game, but it is interesting in that we find this opening that Black plays, which is a kind of a um, a new version of the Chinese opening, where Black, right. instead of having a star point in the upper right corner, Black has the three four point. Uh -huh. And this was played by some players. It's a it was a uh, still a very difficult um, opening to understand because we did not have a large number of games played this way. Uh, but it was something that some players like who like to fight. Um, and the fact that the upper right corner is a 3-4 point uh, makes it more difficult for white to uh, play a territorial game because there's no open 3-3 point there. It makes it more important, uh, more necessary for white to jump in, which AlphaGo did, and black gets to start a fight. Um, just to touch on what a modern player with um, AI help would be playing, of course, the 3-3 three, three point. Um, or actually in the upper left, upper right corner, um, I saw um, my AI was suggesting the Kosumi here. Um, because when white, when black plays here, white's going to play the avalanche. So this is an unusual case where white is going to play the avalanche, basically because if white covers on this side, uh, that pincer stone is gonna be in a very good place for black to start attacking. So that would not be so good for white. White would be pointing in the wrong direction. And white plays the avalanche. And I, I know a lot of people really hate this Joseki because they it gets really complicated when white, black plays here or when yeah. black extends and plays the hane, uh, the big, the large avalanche. And this is called the short, the small avalanche. But um, actually it's become a lot simpler because um, AI programs generally suggest going straight down here. And actually, I'm going to suggest it too. Um, you can find this one in my basic Joseki uh, series, actually. I did a basic Joseki against the attachment underneath. And this makes it really simple because white's going to extend here and black can curl around and curl once. And at this point, the corner territory is already established, close to 15 points. So black does not have to continue there. Black can start playing away. Wow. And this would have been just fine for Black. This would have been an even result. But that was not the idea that we had when we played this version of the Chinese opening. Our idea was usually that we wanted to start a fight on the upper half of the board. Um, that was just the, the strategy that Black usually had in this opening. So Black plays the Hane starting a fight here. So this is natural for uh, for what we plan to do. But it's not going to work very well for black, <laughs> just because the opponent is alpha go. Now, right. this extension is a move that's played when the latter favor is white, because if uh, black curls here, white will be able to cut here. And the latter I'm talking about is this one. So when this latter does not work, it's going to be a collapse for black, pretty much. And the latter is going to hit white's uh, star point. So when white has a, a cornerstone um, in the lower left corner, Usually, this is going to be bad for white. Like, I think it would be okay if white was on the other 3-4 point, then maybe that would, um, let's see if I'm right. Yeah, it looks like that. In that case, maybe the ladder would work. So you have to be careful a bit, but when white has a star point in this corner, um, the ladder works for white. 
So black covers here. So this is this is standard Joseki uh, up to this point. This is the way black handles it when crawling does not work. So white cuts. Black extends once. And because black has this pincer here, this is supposed to be playable for black. Sure. At least we thought so. It turns out uh, white has a slight advantage, according to AlphaGo. I mean, according to Leela. Or actually, Katago, I, I should say, because I was using Katago because it could adjust for the six and a half Komi. Ah, uh, right, of course. And this was an amazing move that white plays here. And the game is really very, very complicated at this point. So um, pushing here was a kind of a key point. And black had a choice between pressing here and jumping. But when black jumps, it's going to be relatively easy for white to get out. So this seems natural. And white plays here. So in the game, black extended. Like if black had played something like this, white could just come out and play here. And black will probably play a double hane. Um, something like this might happen. Actually, this is um, this trade is just OK for white. White can. Um, live on the upper side with Sente, sacrificing five stones, and then white would play something on the right side. It could be here, or it could be something, from, white could play from the corner and then just play here. Um, mm -hmm. White has a pretty good position, even though white has sacrificed all those stones. Um, it's an efficient position for white. A very subtle difference, actually. It's a pretty close game, but white has a slight advantage. So actually, this is, um, even with an AI, this is the suggested move. This is the the move that Lan Xiao played. Mm -hmm. And white pushed out. And so this difficult fight ensued. But this was a point where um, black curled around. And from here on, we're going to see black trying to make Miai of the upper side and an attack against these stones. Right. And it's going to be amazing because white's just going to throw away these stones. Oh, no. And it's going to be a good result for white. And this is just sort of counterintuitive, and it took everyone by surprise. So this is something that we were all commentating on immediately after the game. This was one of the amazing games where we would have expected white to be doing something more on the right side, but white just played away continuously. Oh, my God. So it turns out maybe black should have taken this. Um, locally, this is the key point here. And if black plays here, uh, white's going to have to connect up like this. And uh, something like this would ensue. But if white plays here, black gets to curl around once. And this is going to be a forcing move. And you can see that white has trouble with um, a lack of liberties on the right here. Sure, this group sure, is sure. sort of short on liberties. So black is going to be able to take the initiative, at least. And to go back a few moves, even if white answers this way, now black has two liberties open here. And also there's the fact that white does not have an eye on the side in this case, no potential uh -huh. eye there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would be okay for black to, again, black would be cutting in the center. And the fact that white is short, short on liberties is going to make it playable for black. So black had to hang in there on the upper side and the right side was not important enough to be wow. playing. And that positional judgment is something that was not apparent to me, and I don't think it was apparent to the, the player either, to Lan Chao either, because uh -huh. he curled around. White plays, this is locally, it's a, obviously a key point, but you can see that Black was thinking that this is also such an important point, that it must be an even trade. That was the positional right. judgment that Black had, and very subtly it was incorrect, like um, just a couple of points maybe, but black, white is taking the advantage here. So actually, um, Lila was saying that black had to play on the upper side here also, and just huh. leave the, the potential cut on the fifth line here. So there is something there. And if white, if white answers like this, then black can then play on, on the right side. So that would be a lot better. So, so black would be continuing with something like this, maybe even the strong move here. Um, yes. Just attacking yeah. White's lack of liberty. Was that, was that called in, uh, in Japanese as a great name, uh, nose, to, no, nose attachment? Uh, right? the, hitting the nose of the Tengu, Tengu no Hanasuke. Yeah. Uh, I, think it, it, I think this could be called that, too. Yeah. It's usually when you have a protruding two, two stone shape, so right. it's a bit 
It's slightly different in shape, but it is similar. So black plays this way, and again, white's going to play away. White just takes the advantage <laughs> on the upper side. And it's really good for white to be starting with this move, where you might have expected white to be a, playing a local move, like one of these two points. Yeah, looking at that. White's, yeah, White's really going on a larger scale here. It's much more effective. And then at this point, it's really difficult for black to move immediately. Um, black actually, black actually just played here and made this exchange. It might have been better for black to play here immediately right. and leave some potential of playing at A. It might have been a little bit better, but still, black is has the preconception that the right side is big enough to make this an even game, and this is where Lanshaw went wrong in this game because that that's the reasoning behind him cooling down the upper left here with this extension. He's reducing the value of the following move by playing this extension and um, playing it to, in exchange for this for covering here. Uh -huh. And so after this exchange, the upper side re uh, is reduced in value. And his positional judgment is that now he can take the advantage on the right side and it should be an okay position. But when you see that that is not working, then comes the idea that Black should have left that extra um, hot spot on the upper side too. So it's more, it's not a local reading problem. It's more of a positional judgment that in which wow. he thought he had a good enough position on the right side to just leave that upper side. And so White just throws them away like this. And it's amazing because um, Katago is already giving White something like 63% winning percentage here. And that's um, just that, like it's just a couple of points that Black's winning before Komi now. And it turns out White's getting so much on both sides here. White's getting enough on this side. It already makes up for most of the black territory there in the upper upper right. And at this point, it becomes apparent that black is just building on what was already a living group. Like black started with this living group in the corner, and the rest of that territory actually is just taking stones on the outside of that living group. And so the fact that white has trashed the whole upper side and made a white territory there and taken territory on the on the right side gives white a slight advantage here. Well, and taking it with fewer stones. I mean, look at all those black stones that are in play. I count, I think, 10, maybe 11 black stones, and white's only used uh, yeah. six. Well, in the Tewadi, you, you have to account for the white stones in there, too, but still it's a very efficient for white because white is playing both on the left, upper side and the right side at the same exactly. time. So that's, wow. that's the point there. Uh, just to show a few more moves, um, White, you can see that White still got to take the initiative in the upper left here with pressing here. And so that was kind of the final blow at this point. And the game is already going to be close uh, before Komi. Amazing. So interesting. And, and I just, I, I totally empathize with, you know, you're going to give me a group that size? Sure, I'll take it every every single day. Um, and, it was and, very yeah. counterintuitive that taking that group was not good enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Michael. See everybody next time.